Guys, Patricio Pitbull defended his Bellator title last night, submitting Emmanuel Sanchez with a beautiful guillotine choke. That got us thinking, might he be the most underrated champion in a major organization? We're talking about that right now. What's up, Barnhill family? Welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. So Nick, talk about excellence. Patricio mm -hmm. Pitbull, as far as Bellator champions goes, he yeah. is the... Uh, not only on the Mount Rushmore, he's, uh, I, I don't even know, they need to create a separate mountain just for him because he's a truly incredible special fighter and he is a defending champ champ, which you don't see very often. Yeah, he's certainly the poster boy for Bellator and, and he's the best champion they have probably ever. It's really, really interesting to see somebody do the things he's doing and kind of the way he's doing it. And I don't want to say that he's just outclassing everybody in Bellator and the divisions that he's in, but it, he's kind of just levels above the people at 55 and 45. And that includes the guy that just left that is now the talk of the town at, at the UFC in Michael right. Chandler. I mean, he has victories over him, very impressive ones at that. And everybody that he gets in there with, it kind of seems like he just has ice running through his veins and he, he just walks right through him. He's either far too powerful with his strikes or if they get tied up in a close quarter situation, he locks some sort of deadly submission up in a matter of seconds. That, that guillotine was one of the tightest, quickest finishing guillotines I've ever seen. You know, it, you, it reminded me sort of of uh, Ortega versus Cub Swanson. Yeah. But it was done almost a little bit cleaner and, and finished a little bit faster. Well, absolutely. You usually see people get put to sleep quickly with like really tight rear naked chokes or Dars chokes, things like that, that are really strong blood chokes. That was an arm in guillotine. Yeah. You don't, I mean, that's a brutal submission, but you don't see arm in guillotines putting people to sleep like that. Right. That was amazing to yeah. me. And it goes against everything we're taught in MMA class. You don't pull guard in an MMA fight, but when you're Patricio Pitbulls, you know the rules so that you can bend them to your yeah. liking. And it certainly worked for him. He uh, has, he's got 33 wins in his career, 12 submissions, 11 KOs. It doesn't get more balanced than that. No. When you take on a guy, it's like, okay, Francis Ngannou, I got to take it. Okay, we know what's going to happen here. He's going to try to knock me out. Right. That's what I have to plan for. You take on a guy, Damian Maya, his goal is to submit me. That's what we plan for. When you take on a guy like Patricio Pitbull, it's like you've combined the two into one. You don't yeah. know what to prepare for. And you mentioned Michael Chandler. He knocked Michael Chandler out yeah. in the first round. And now history will tell how good just how good that knockout truly was yeah because what if michael chandler becomes the ufc undisputed champion this guy's got a knockout win over him not that long ago when it was in the first round yeah and i mean it's really really crazy i, I would love to see patricio pitbull fight at both 45 and 55 of the ufc's rosters i, I think he matches well against volkanovsky i think that he has he matches well obviously against chandler so that would Probably give him a good shot against Oliveira. I, I don't think you know people like Conor McGregor would, would do too well against somebody like Pitbull. So it makes me wonder, is he the best uh, champ champ in the entire sport right now? Well, uh, male champ champ because yeah. the, female, the lioness is she, she's squarely in the in the in the top spot. I yeah, think. she's kind of way of in her own league. But um, as far as com competition, I don't really see anybody that's dominating the field in the men's divisions quite like he is right now. He's doing things that nobody else is doing. He's kind of, I don't really know who he's going to fight next. And if you look at his last opponent, uh, Emmanuel Sanchez, right? That's, yeah, Emmanuel Sanchez. He's... He, his last fight, he looked like a million bucks. He looked so good in his last fight. And I was like, okay, maybe this is uh this, somebody's going to give him a little bit of trouble. And man, he did. I mean, there was no, no, there was no issues at all. I'm very excited to see the AJ McKee fight because AJ has shown that he is absolutely one of the rising stars in the sport. The, the whole industry of MMA is, is lucky to have somebody like AJ McKee. Yeah. I think his skills are through the roof. I think he's one of these young guys that's going to be a problem for whatever division he decides to get into. I know he's 45 right now, but I could see him making a move up to 55 as his body develops a bit. And uh, if, if he's able to compete with Pitbull, we know just how special he is. And if Pitbull's able to make quick work of him, uh, we're going to need to, we're going to need some more questions answered because 
I personally need to see Pitbull against the very best in the world because he might just be the best 45, 55 or in, in, on the entire planet. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. And I looked it up. I was kind of curious. So I said, mm -hmm. what rank is he when you just forget about the organization? Just how does yeah. he rank as far as lightweights and, and featherweights go? And he is the number six ranked lightweight in the world, according to SureDog right now, and, mm -hmm. and the number seventh ranked featherweight. I might be able to get behind number six lightweight, but I still think he should be a little higher. Totally disagree with number seven featherweight. Yeah. I truly, and, and I'm not one to say or suggest that the Bellator champions could beat the UFC champions. I think if you look at the roster top to bottom, uh, the UFC wins pretty much all, but, but maybe a, one or two of those fights, champ mm -hmm. versus champ. The one or two is... Patricio Pitbull. Yeah. If you put him against Alexander Volkanovsky right now, I'd love to see what the odds would be. I truthfully think that Pitbull could beat Alexander Volkanovsky. I mean, his submission game from all angles, from the feet, from the ground, his pressure, his calmness in the in the in the cage. Yeah. I mean, I almost said octagon. He doesn't even fight in the octagon in the in the, in the circular yeah. cage. Yeah. His calmness uh, is is something to really talk about because he just. He's in there with killers in front of him. As we said, Michael Chandler, and he just walks him down, ice in his veins, knocks him out in the yeah. first round. This guy is the real deal. And I'm super excited for this, this tournament finale uh, against AJ McKee because McKee was actually hoping, because he did the commentary that, uh, for Bellator, which they put on a great show the other night, by yeah. the way. So shout out to them for you know, their back, and they've got the light, light heavyweight tournament coming up. So they're doing some good things. But he was hoping Sanchez would win so he could fight Sanchez in the, in the championship bout and get the 145 belt plus the million dollars. And then he was going to move up to 155 and take Patricio, or according to him, try to take Patricio's 155 belt. Now, so once they squared off in the cage after we saw the outcome in Pitbull 1, he said, I'm going to beat you, I'm going to take the million dollars, and then I'm going to turn around, go up to 155, and take both of your belts back to back. So Man. I'm extremely excited about that. That's a tall order. We'll see if AJ McKee can do it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he'll be the betting favorite going into those. I think Pitbull, like you said, he's so calm in there. Nothing faces him. He doesn't get overhyped about a, an opponent or the fans or anything like that. And it was really great to see Bellator. I know they ha are doing no fans still, and that's nice. Uh, but they came back just in the, just at the right time because the UFC was having an off weekend, uh, no yeah. fights. And so I was like, man, we can't ha go a whole weekend without fights. And then they're like, don't worry, Friday night we got a great card at Bellator. So I was very happy about that. And I uh, almost missed it because it's on Friday. I'm so used to fights being on Saturday that yeah. it's like I almost forgot that they were on Friday night. Yeah, it throws off the week. It kind of makes you think think that um friday night is saturday and then saturday feels like a sunday because we just watch the fights but uh everything for people like track. you and me who like base our week around training and uh and right. the ufc and bellator fight schedule <laughs> right yeah i literally li my life is it revolves around that kind of stuff like a, a pay-per-view for the ufc i know the embeddeds are coming out i know what time and and every day you're going to get a new piece of uh content so it was really nice for Bellator to jump right back into the mix. And I hope they stay consistent with their shows because they're a great organization. And there's a lot of fighters right now that are looking for opportunities. They're looking for a home. They're looking for a place to showcase their skills. And if you're not one of the uh, under, five, under 600 uh, athletes on the UFC's roster, you're kind of stuck right now. It's very hard to find fights. And yeah, there's a couple of organizations in other continents that are putting on shows, but they're few and far in between. And, uh, you know, I just feel like Bellator, if they can keep this momentum going and keep good fights happening, they'll be able to keep bringing more people in, keep eyes on it. You know, they're brand new to Showtime. They've got, you know, Steven Espinoza is now working alongside the Bellator team to bring these productions. And I think that has to do kind of with why, the show was so good. It, it ran like a proper uh, Showtime boxing event. It yeah. was really nice. It was really well done. They let it stay its own Bellator style, but they, they kind of spruced it up a little bit in all the right ways. And I was super happy to see it. I think the, the caliber of the, the martial artist and the fights was a, equal and on par with the production and everything. It was a great showing of Bellator on, on Showtime. Yeah, I agree. And I think, I mean, this light heavyweight tournament is incredibly interesting. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of UFC veterans. You got Yoel Romero. You got Phil Davis. Uh, Lyoto Machida's taken on Ryan Bader for the second time. There's some big fights. And yeah. that, that's coming up this, this coming weekend. But circling back to 
Pitbull for a second. I, I don't know what it's going to take to get him. I doubt the UFC will ever do a cross promotion. They just they have won't. too many good people and it would just log jam things to, and they don't need to quite frankly, but just for my own selfish reasons, I would love to see him against the best in the UFC. But then at the same time, I also understand that he is the money maker for Bellator yeah. right now. If He's I was the, Bellator, I'd hold on to him. That's the thing. They're back every time his his contract is close to being up. They back up the yeah. Brinks truck and say how much how, how many stacks do you want? Right. And so I get it. And you know, I can't say I wouldn't be doing the same thing if I was him. And you know, in my career, but it's I, I just hope as a fan and someone who loves Pitbull that we do get to see him in the UFC's octagon at some point to see, because he's only in his early 30s. I think he's 32. If I'm wrong, he's 33. Yeah. Same, same, same age range as Chandler. He can come over next year, the year after, and still test his hand and see, okay, was he really the best 145er in the world? Yeah. Can he compete with the best 155ers in the world right now? I would love to see those questions get answered. Yeah, and he trains with Henry Cejudo. You know, he's got the same cornerman that Cejudo has, so I'm sure they're getting great rounds in. And, uh, you know, I would personally probably favor him over Volkanovski at 145 for the yeah. title if they were to fight. And that's kind of the fight that we see Henry Cejudo ponying for a, a little bit. He's kind of, you know, yeah. chirping yeah. a bit. And I think that he sees that as a good opportunity because the size of Volkanovski, well, Volkanovski and, and, and Pibble are kind of the same size stature. They're kind of the same build, right? So I wonder if he's felt Pitbull and kind of has an idea about how he would maneuver against somebody like Volkanovski and feels like that's a good matchup for him. And I know this isn't a video about Cejudo, but that could be something really interesting where we see, you know, that's the cool thing about the sport. We don't, we might not see all the matchups we want to see, but because the uh, gyms op open up to all organizations, you get Bellator fighters in there with UFC fighters all the time. TJ Dillashaw and, and Juan Archuleta are a great yeah. example of that. You know, you got the two champs, uh, one a former champ, one a current champ of Bellator and the UFC training every day together. So we know the skills at the champ level of, of both organizations are very similar. And I feel like uh, Pitbull deserves a higher ranking at the 45 for sure. And I don't think I can name five people after last, uh, after Friday night's performance, uh, who at 155 who would just beat him. And I would go ahead and just guarantee it and, and bet money on it. Yeah, me either. Well, guys, let us know in the comments. This is one that I am truly interested to see y'all's comments to see. Do you think that Pitbull could beat Volkanovsky? Nick and I obviously laid out that we think it's certainly possible. Uh, let's debate. If you, if you disagree, let us know. We love to chat with you guys there. And thanks so much again for watching our videos. Our, our channel is really growing. We had no idea it would happen this fast or that you guys would engage so much with us. And both of us really, truly appreciate it. So keep it coming, guys. We love the comments. We love responding. And we love to see y'all's opinion on things. So until the next one, have a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe on this video. And check us out on audio where you listen to those podcasts. We also have a special surprise coming at 1,000 subscribers, so help us get there real quick, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, that's one. right. Yeah, we got a surprise for you guys. Thanks for remembering yeah, that, man. Nick. Peace. See you guys in the next video.